Hi, I'm Dr. Dan talking from Little Vitamin Pro, and I want to discuss a little bit about diagnostic misconceptions. Uh, two things have brought this on. One is about neurotransmitter testing, and the other has to do with blood brain barrier testing. Now, with neurotransmitter testing, some people discount it because they say that two people with depression have different profiles. Well, that doesn't mean that it's not useful. That just means that it's not, those are not what we call diagnostic biomarkers, which I'll explain a little bit later. And the other um, that prompted this video today was a person who was kind of upset with us because we couldn't give, um, give this person, um, you know, CPT codes or procedure codes for specific bio, um, you know, blood testing or some other kind of testing for blood-brain barrier diagnosis. And this illustrates you know, both of these illustrate a really important misconception about what is diagnosis and how you go about it. Now, biomarkers are these are physiological traits that we can that we can use, we can look at, and we can also um, use them for diagnosis and also for to evaluate our treatment. Now, there are two types of biomarkers. One is diagnostic, and the other is functional. Now, diagnostic is the the small minority of these things and then the rest are functional. So let me explain. The um, diagnostic, a di diagnostic biomarker might be uh, for Down syndrome, for example. Now if you do a, a profile, in, a genetic profile, and you find that that person has three of chromosome number 21, then they have Down syndrome. And every single person that you test who has Down syndrome has three um, 21 chromosomes. So, of number 21. <clears throat> so that is diagnostic. It's every single time. Another one might be, um, not quite as obvious, would be uh, what we call evoke potentials. That's the <clears throat> time it takes for a light signal to get from the, from the retina to the visual cortex. And that should take something like 10 or 12 milliseconds, I forget exactly. But the point is that when that gets lengthened, that's diagnostic for multiple sclerosis. So, if you take someone with MS and you run about potentials, you expect to find that, that biomarker. So that is diagnostic of that, of that condition. Now rheumatoid arthritis is, will be an example of diagnosis by functional biomarkers. So we're going to look at uh, rheumatoid factor in the blood, but just because a person has elevated rheumatoid factor doesn't mean that they have rheumatoid arthritis. That's more of a functional thing. You're going to have to use other test and uh, doctor's clinical judgment in order to say yes, this person has rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, the same might be true of heart disease. So let's say you come from a long line of people, men in their family who died of heart disease. And so you, you go to the doctor and they run a blood test and they find you have elevated cholesterol and elevated triglycerides. Well they don't tell you, yes, you have heart disease. Those are indicative of their probability but they're not diagnostic in themselves. So that a good cardiologist is going to run some other tests. They're going to look at, you know, clinical presentation. Does this person have trouble getting up and down steps? That kind of thing. And maybe do um, even a treadmill, or you know, if, the, if it's bad enough, they might even do an invasive procedure to actually go and look for themselves. So keep in mind that just because something has um, only functional biomarkers doesn't mean that it's not valid and it doesn't mean that that doesn't exist. A person could have depression and there's no specific biomarker for depression, but that is a very real thing and, and certain neurotransmitter profiles will help a person treat that, you know, help the doctor treat it. And also you'll be able to see those profiles change as the person gets better. So that's a whole other topic. But anyway, the point is that with uh, something like blood-brain barrier, you know, we're talking about a, a submicroscopic layer, and this is, um, if, you know, the studies that have been done on blood-brain barrier have needed a, a scanning electron microscope to see to actually find it, because it's such a uh, such a small structure. But that doesn't mean it's not important, of course. And we can apply that if a person has intestinal issues, they probably have blood-brain barrier issues too. So what you're going to do then to diagnose this is you're not going to look for just that one diagnostic biomarker, you can use some functional ones. And some functional ones might be elevated 
um, inflammatory uh, cytokines or or uh, maybe elevated antibodies to IgE and IgE antibodies or you might be looking at certain blood things in blood profile that indicate in, in, uh, inflammatory responses you know maybe fibrinogen that kind of thing uh, you can look at zonulin there are a lot of things you can look at that are, that's going to help you and then you can treat and see you know what changed what got better so the point is that you know there really are two different ways of diagnosing something and we love it when we have that, that diagnostic biomarker we can say yep you've got that you've got that disease we know that for certain we've known it for, for 100 years and that's just the way it is but just because you don't have that you know doesn't mean that we can't make a diagnosis anyway using these functional functional methods so that's the that's the uh, ba the short explanation of the difference between diagnostic and functional biomarkers and don't don't believe just because there isn't a diagnostic biomarker that the disease doesn't exist and that you can't diagnose it it's just a little bit harder so that's uh, that's that for today, so hopefully that was helpful. Thanks a lot for listening.